churches that started and didn't last a yes. year, didn't last five years, didn't last ten years. And God has kept this work going for 40 years with expectation of it going even more. And uh, so I'm, I'm just uh, honored that the Lord would allow me to be a part of it and be a, a part of and to, to pastor such a fine group of people. Amen. He gave me a whole bunch of winners that I could stand with. Hallelujah. Now that was a good place for an amen. I mean, that, that really was. That was a good place for an amen. I, I believe all y'all should know y'all winners by now, right? How many know you're a winner? Amen. 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 And uh, that he would allow me such a privilege, my wife and my family, to serve and uh, to serve among such people who love the Lord. I'm just, I'm just humble, and uh, even for this night, um, when uh, my youngest son will be allowing God to use him, and so I'm thankful to God, uh, Lane, one of the, uh, actually the only, only person who has, from the beginning, been here, and been most consistent in being here. Amen. And uh, that, that's no small thing either. Uh, actually, she, she was here right from the start when her daddy started. I came on a few years later. I mean, I was here, you know, around, but I wasn't a member. I joined a few years later, but she was, uh, her and her husband was right there at the start. Uh, and for her to continue with this work and other family members and other friends, uh, I, I just thank God for you. And um, we're glad to be back. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. We still Amen, right. Bishop. Amen. <laughs> we still right. Amen. Enjoy the choir and just thank God for everybody. So um, I'm not going to take too much time. I will. Uh, and, and I am soliciting prayer for Lady Singleton. Amen. Uh, wasn't on our game game while we were away, uh, health-wise. And so uh, I am soliciting your prayer for support for her. Uh, we believe God for the total restoration of health now. I, I think all of us can witness that the Lord has brought her a long way on Amen. Amen. And uh, there was a song that, that was sung said, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. And I believe that's applicable to her recovery. Amen. And God isn't through with her yet. That she will yet recover. Amen. And be able to live pain free. And, and uh, just, you know, experience the blessings of the Lord um, going forward. And able to just enjoy every day that the Lord sends. And so uh, we, we believe God for that. Thank God for each and every one of you. Certainly will continue to pray for our deacon uh, Cunningham that are experiencing challenges in their bodies. Amen. Uh, again, I'm, I'm thankful to God for all of you. Everything going on in our absence and y'all doing what needed to be done. So, thank God for our musicians tonight as well. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, uh, I'm going to release this mic back into the hands of who uh, looks like they're the MC tonight. And uh, in the first of minister, I don't feel like thank God for all our ministers and um, just the body trucks of the Holy Spirit, every member, every child, every adult. We thank God for you. You are special. You are precious. Amen. Amen. And then I heard y'all had a time last night. Amen. Amen. I heard y'all. I mean, we were only able to see me in the part of it, then it went out. When it was just starting to get. Gooder and gooder. <laughs> Amen. But uh, we just we just bless the Lord for His faithfulness, and uh, at this time, back in the hands of Him. Amen. Praise the Lord, my Bishop. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Right now, we get ready to introduce our speaker. He um kind of busy there with finance, but he could um get ready. And none other to introduce him than his wife, who know him. Praise God. Amen. 
Amen. Know them well. Enough them to do them. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We just thank God. So we're going to ask um, Sister Ebony to come up and give her a hand as she comes. Amen. Amen.
that I had spoke on last week. And it was including your family and friends in prayer. And God, I, I believe he's, he's given me a word. And so uh, I thank God for doing it. And I thank God for those that were praying with me uh, that God would have his way. Tonight, when I was pondering after that, that intense moment, God gave me a message that he gave me beforehand. And I share with the bishop. It's called Prerequisites of Transition. All right, all right. And um, there is a lot of transitions that are happening in this house. There are a lot of people that need to. It's, it's, it's essential for your place and the remnant that will be left to take a stand. Amen. Come on. I said, there are transitions happening as we're here, as we speak. Amen. And there are some people in this house, you need to, I repeat, you need to, it's essential. It's like water to live. It's like air you breathe. In the kingdom of God, to take a stand and find your place. Amen. 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 We had, um, I was studying and uh, I said we because I'm, I don't like to be alone. The Holy Spirit was with me. <laughs> <laughs> And um, yeah, gave me an understanding of, of transitions and, and how they're going on all the time. This world is a world of transitions. And if you look at the earth, it's going through a transition every day. There's new things happening. There's, there's things that were there that's not there anymore. Like uh, if you look at erosion, you look at the way, the, the transition of how the water goes up into the air and it goes back down to the ground. There are transitions happening every day, all the time. And it happens not just with the water, it happens with animals. Animals are born, they, they feed and they nurse. Then if, if they're predators, they go and hunt. Then they return to the earth and then they feed the grass. The grass come back up. And it's, it's transitions and cycles that are happening all the time. But the transition I'm talking about tonight is transitions in this house, in the kingdom. Not just this building, in the kingdom of God. There are transitions happening. And I have an obligation to, to, to stress to you how, how critically important it is for you to understand that these transitions are including you. But it's depending on you. title again uh, was prerequisite subjects. Um, learning under, under my father. You know I'm going to give you a definition, right? A couple of them. <laughs> and I, I, was, I was led to study the, to look up the, the word prerequisite. And one definition is a, a thing that is required as a prior condition for something else to happen or exist. So now keep in mind we're talking about you, a place for you in the kingdom of God and a transition. Okay? With prerequisites. With conditions. Okay? A thing that is required as a prior condition for something else to happen or exist. Your existence in the kingdom of God 
as far as the ministry is concerned, has prerequisites. It has, it's, 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 it's a prerequisite. It's something that you have to do. It's something that you have to give. It's something that you have to offer before you can get to your place. Amen. Okay? Transition. The process for a period of change from one state or condition to another. I'm going to that thing. I'm going to condition. I'm going to give you the definition of condition. And see, I got somewhere I got to go, so I'm going to get going, you know what I'm saying? All right, all right. Condition, the state of something, especially with regard to its appearance, quality, working order, definition two, the circumstances affecting the way in which people live or work, especially with regard to their safety or well-being. or a period of change from one state or condition to another. Both prerequisite and transition has condition as a part of its definition. I'm going to read condition again. The state of something. We talk about you. Okay? Especially with regards to its appearance quality or working order. The circumstances affecting the way in which people live or work especially with regard to their safety or well-being. Everything about you is in your hands. One thing that God gave us, the power that, that the human spirit has You have the power to choose who you will serve this day. You have the power to either live for God, to live for man. You have the power to choose to go with the good or with the bad. It's up to you. The scripture that, here we go to John. 1, 12, and 3. I mean, 12 and 13, I mean. Sorry, I'm going to that off. I'm going to be John 1, 12, 13. you have the power of choice it, it's, it's, it's something that that the human spirit has but that power isn't enough to be in the kingdom of God All right. so you can choose to be a good person you can choose to be a nice person you can choose to do good things. You can choose to, to say nice things to people. But that power isn't enough to really be who you're supposed to be in the kingdom of God. No, John 1, 12, 13. As, as a matter of fact, let, let's go up to 9. I'll start reading just go 12. The true light that gives light to every person was coming into the world. Hold on, this is not the version. Uh, We're going to go with King James. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, 
even to them that believe on his name. 13. Which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Free will is, is something that God would violate because he, he's a God of order. He watched Adam, he watched Eve partake in something that he told them they shouldn't have. And we see the effects of that choice still to this day. But because God is such a God of order, and he's such a God of his word, he gave him free will that he didn't intervene. However, he did prepare a way for us to get back to that proper right standards with him. In Romans 8 and 11, let's go there. See, now, now keep in mind what, what we're reading and, and how it all goes together. I'm going to read 8 and 11 all the way to 15. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brother, we, I mean, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. How does all this go together? Like, like, what, what am I saying, I guess? It's, it's kind of, how do we tie all this in? The power of choice is a prerequisite. It's something that you must gain mastery over. It's something that you must gain power over. Because if you can exercise the power over the choice, the little power that he did give you, the little that you have, he'll give more to. And you can grow to be a son of God. We're all children of God. When we come into the body, we're children of God. Yes, yes, yes. But you have to be led by the Spirit to become a son of God. Back in, the, back in the old days, there was a difference in, in, in sexes. Daughters were not revered as high as a son was revered. So to, to, to have a son was a blessing. They considered it a great blessing because the seed is carried through the sun. Amen. So God, he, he wants us to be those seed carriers. Because that's the only way we can keep the lineage going. Abraham, his, 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 his body was quickened by the Holy Spirit. And God gave him a seed. And that seed was so powerful that it touched the dead womb and the womb lived and produced. Jesus came years later, 42 generations later, and he said, I am the seed of Abraham. You've got to be ready to understand you have to transform into a son. Come on. It's not enough just to be in the family. You want to be a son in the family. Jesus. 
Come on. All right now. It's 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 so critical that we understand to get to the better things that God has for us. There has to be something different than what we've been doing. There has to be a shift yes. in the culture of this ministry. Yes, yes. Amen. The new life is in the blood. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. The seed is the new life, but it's only carried by the sun. Mm. Jesus. Uh -huh. We can't do what we've been doing and considering like God is going to use it, like this is what I'm bringing. So take it. We can't yeah. come with the, the, the I'm, I'm here for this moment and then I'm over here for this moment. And, and he's calling us to usher in the generation after us. Yes. Yeah. I said it over at another church. But it's still applicable here. You have to connect somebody that holds a position and you have to be trained. Yes. Our mothers, our fathers, they are getting older and we thank God for the strength that they have. We thank God for the, the jubilance that's in them, the life that's still in them. But there, there is a wisdom that is coming out regardless. But if you put your cup at the fountain, then you can get some of it. It's like a water fountain just continually pouring. And, and, and it's just going on the ground. But it's so many people that's sitting around thirsty. And you're like, well, why would you just let the water just go to the ground and, and have no benefit? When you're thirsty, this is how you get filled with the living water. You get with somebody who's walking in the ministry, in that position, Hallelujah. and God will pour it into you. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. He want to grow us. Yes. He trying to cultivate us. Yes. We are the ground. And it ain't all this trouble we've been going through. It ain't even for us. Amen. Don't you fool yourself to think you're that important to the devil. <laughs> yes. That he been fighting you for you. He been fighting you for who gonna come after you? Yes. Who are you gonna pour into? Who are you gonna impart to? Yes. How can you impart something you never got? The prerequisites of transition. The first prerequisite outside of getting a mastery of choice. But actually, it's, it's kind of before that. It is before that. It's a true encounter with Christ. We've been here all our lives. Some come in later on, but we hear the word. We hear the word. Don't unadulterate the word of God in this house. We got a fine repertoire of ministers pouring the word of God every time they get an opportunity to minister. We've had encounters with Christ. But an encounter with Christ, it is not going to change free will. Okay, I'll prove it to you. God damn it. I'll prove it to you. <laughs> Look at Judas. He didn't just have an encounter with him, he actually experienced it. 
if he had a relationship with them, an encounter could be just but for a moment. Experience is just at that time, but he had a relationship with them. But he still had to make a choice. So don't think just because you come here, just because your mama know the word, your daddy know the word, you been hearing the word, you, you listen to such and such, you, you do such and such, that don't mean that you're going to be a son. Right. Yeah. Preach. That don't mean that you will be a disciple. Amen. The Bible said we deny our cross daily. We pick up our cross daily and deny ourselves and follow him. That's, that's a continual process. We just read in Romans 8 that, that unless you're led by the Spirit, you can't be called a son. You're not a son. Don't fool yourself. Let's go to Acts 9. Acts 9. Some of you are familiar with it. This is when, uh, when Paul was, was Saul at first. Let's go to one. No, as a matter of fact, can you go down to... Uh, Three. I'm just going to read for a little while. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the prince. And he trembled and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. at that time was one of the highest religious leaders of that day. Okay. Let me see if I can explain this. There is a, 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 a printed word of God that anybody can read. You have Muslims reading it, you have Hindus reading it, you have all kinds of other religion. You have Satan, Satan worshippers reading it. But the word of God, is, is, it has no effect. They deny the power thereof. But then we thank God for the living word. Amen. Amen. You have the word in the spirit that, that has life that came to be the light of men. In John, as we read. All right, let's, y'all stay here, right here. I'm gonna go back to John for a second. Because that, that was very interesting, right? John had, let me go back up to, uh, six. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now we just read that Saul an encounter 
with the word. <laughs> Amen. Now, now, come on now, turn with me now. Amen. Can you pull back up uh, Acts 9? Um, and I think it was round 6. 5 and 6. Amen. Nope, nope. Go back up some. Uh, go to th three. Thank you, Bishop. Go to three. Acts 9 and 3. Because I want you to see it. I need you to follow me. As he journeyed, he came near the master. And suddenly there shined round about him Jesus from heaven. Speak. <laughs> there shined round about him the word made flesh. Speak. From heaven. Okay, let's go to, let's, I'm going to read John. Keep that there, please. He was not the light but was sent to bear witness of that light. That light, I mean, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. John 1, in his pretty much entirety, is talking about who Jesus was. Yes. Okay, so now, Saul had a, a he, knew the, he, knew the, he knew the word with the writings. He knew the writings of the word but he hadn't had an encounter with the spirit of the word. Amen. He didn't have the encounter with the seed. <laughs> the seed is how you become a son. You can't, you can't be a son without a seed. the mighty hand of God yes. and he will exhort us in the time. Yes. So the first prerequisite was a true encounter with Christ. We know that we can, we can go to church, we can hear the word, we can read our Bibles and not have an encounter with the seed. But when you have that encounter, the true encounter, it's going to produce something in you that says, what do you want me to do? Because he's greater than us. He's greater than all. So you can't stand face to face with greatness and think you are better. We talk about God. Ezra 9, 5 and 15. Your bloodline is in this ministry. 
Your, your, your time is invested in this ministry. This is all of our, 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 our ministry. It's been given to us. It's been entrusted to us. But don't think that you can do whatever and still possess your life. about Ezra. We're talking about being humble. This is humility. O Lord God of Israel, thou art righteous. Uh, verse 5. for my heaviness. Why would you have? There's a question, right? And having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord my God and said, Oh my God, I am ashamed and blush to lift my face to thee, my God, for our iniquities are increased over our heads and our trespass is grown up into the heavens. Are you starting to hear humble? This is a man who was living right. This is a man who was choosing to still keep the blood stained banner lifted. But he humbled himself before who? Before God. So we, we, we understand that Ezra definitely had an encounter. Since the days of our father, we have been a great trespass unto this day. And for our iniquities, we have our kings and our priests been delivered into the hands of kings of the lands, to the sword, to captivity, into the a spoil, into confusion of face, as it is this day. And now for a little spare grace have been shewed from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape. Say I'm a part of the remnant. <laughs> and to give us a nail in his holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. Yes. For we were bondmen, yet our God have not forsaken us in our bondage but have extended mercy unto us in the sight of the king of Persia to give us reviving, to set us up, set, us the house, set up the house of our God, and to repair the desolation thereof, and to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. And now, O oh our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments. Was this man not humble? They were in bondage. Going through hard times. God still was on his mind.